So I made a PVP gold guide an age ago, back when I was using a video editing software from 2014, and the quality of my videos look the part. So I wanted to create a new, fresh PVP gold guide. Plus, a lot has changed. This video is getting uploaded during White Strike's Mayhem, weekend PVP events are gonna be a thing, there's plenty to talk about. The truth is, PvP is a really lucrative endeavor. Despite what some PvP streamers may have you think because they're constantly complaining about how poor they are, there are some incredible opportunities for turning your PvP ventures into gold. From outright converting your PvP currencies into gold to earning exclusive items from PvPing, there are a lot of options for all different kinds of PvPers. And if you're watching this right now thinking to yourself, eh, nah, I'm not really that good at PvP or that interested in it, I implore you to not click off just yet. You definitely don't have to be a super sweaty PvPer to benefit from the gold making strategies that come from PvP. <laughs> Especially in the meta that persists as I'm recording this video where all you have to do is slap on the broken soul ring to become Omega OP. And if you are resolute in your disdain for PvP, it may still serve you well to pay attention, as understanding what PvP items are valuable may very well help you in your flipping endeavors. After all, sweaty PvPers are kind of notorious for listing super valuable items that they receive from PvP for ridiculously cheap, making them my prime flipping victims. Maybe that's why they're all so poor. In their defense, not all of them give a damn enough to understand the worth and value of their items. Fair play. But if you're here, then I'm guessing that you do. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let's start with AP, the universal PvP currency. You receive AP upon killing players in Ciro and IC, completing battlegrounds, taking and defending keeps and resources in Cyrodiil, and completing a variety of PvP-related quests. There are a handful of merchants that sell you AP-exclusive items that you can then purchase and relist on your trading guild's guild store to sell for gold. Let's speedrun through some of the best items to buy to convert that well-earned AP into gold. Yeah, 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 meta this, meta that. Have you ever met a f***ing girl before? I always mention how metas shift and change more often than the average PvP main takes a shower, but these sets have been decent options to buy for a while now. Deadly has had its time in the limelight as a set used by primarily Templars in PvE and, in the past, PvP. Vicious Death is a staple set in every good PvP bomber or ball group Andy's wardrobe. Potentates has started to create creep back into the mainstream in light of all the old gen Andes running around in PvP zones, and these other sets have had niche uses in previous patches. I recommend keeping up with PvP content creators and lurking in PvP discords to see what serial sets people are talking about using every patch, and likewise meta, because again, these things change dramatically with most patches. Some things to ask yourself every patch is, what kind of PvP meta are we currently experiencing? Is everyone gravitating towards damage over time builds? Or is this more of a burst meta? Are people building into ult gen? By understanding the answers of these kinds of questions, you'll have an easier time deciding which gear coffers to pick up. If you're not interested in spending AP, you could also complete town quests to receive gear coffers that will drop a random set piece that corresponds with the town in question. Keep in mind that when it comes to buying gear coffers in PvP, RNG is a factor. You can't curate your drops to get exactly what you want. Sometimes you win big and get a great item from a great set in the best in slot trade, and sometimes you get absolute garbage. My advice? Try to gamble on gear sets that have multiple uses, such as sets that are used in both PvE and PvP, so that you can better your chances at drawing a sought after item. But let's say you don't want to gamble with your AP, you'd rather spend it on something that you know will guarantee you a lot of gold. Then I'd recommend purchasing valuable gold jewelry from the Golden Vendor, a merchant that pulls up in Cyrodiil on the weekends and has a rotating inventory every week. Just don't be like this one three-head who mauled it in the comment section of my previous PvP guide. <laughs> he told me that he spent all of his AP on a bunch of bound golden jewels and got pissed off that I didn't clarify the fact that bound sets are a thing. So for the two people that need to hear this message, bind on pickup gear means that it will bind 
when you when you pick it up <laughs> be sure to spend your ap on bind on equip gear instead that way you can actually trade it to others for gold check in with your pvp and pve friendos to see which gold jewels are worth picking up if you need help deciphering which sets will be sought after I personally like to save my AP to buy a bunch of gold jewelry during the PvP events when the golden vendor has a special inventory that's unique to the event, consisting of PvP-specific jewels. Otherwise, you might catch me buying a couple gold jewels here and there for popular Overland sets. But Artea, there's still a bit of RNG involved with that strategy, right? The golden vendor isn't always going to have something worth buying. Yeah, you're right. And more often than not, the golden vendor is going to have a bunch of worthless shit for sale and I don't blame you for not wanting to wait until something good shows up in their inventory. The quickest means to turn your AP into gold that is not swayed in the least bit by RNG is purchasing alliance spell draughts to sell for gold. These draughts provide the same buffs as the very valuable essence of spell power potions, although I do find that I have to list them for slightly less than I would a handcrafted spell power pot to get a fast and reliable sale. If you can safely, efficiently, and reliably farm Telvar in the Imperial City, then you, my friend, are a giga chad for this is among one of the most lucrative endeavors in the game. Telvar can be earned by killing mobs in the Imperial City and by killing players that are carrying Telvar on them. The more Telvar you carry on you, the more Telvar you'll earn, thanks to Telvar modifiers. Whoa, whoa. Here I come. Oh, here I come. But beware. If you get killed, you lose half of the Telvar that you're currently carrying on you. <coughs> some people, me, I'm some people, like to go out with small amounts of Telvar and return to the base when they've got something like 5 to 10k Telvar on them so that they may safely deposit it into the bank before they head out for another round of IC. Others like to go sicko mode and keep tens of thousands of Telvar on them as they farm boss after boss or player after player. It's very much a case of high risk, high reward. Pick a playstyle that works for for you. Allow me to speedrun through some of the best ways to convert your Telvar into gold. A vast majority of alchemy ingredients are highly sought after as they're integral to the creation of powerful potions and poisons. If you've got a smaller sum of Telvar that you're thinking of converting into gold, buying wax apothecary satchels is a great way to do so. Sell those ingredients as they are or use them to create valuable potions and poisons to sell for gold instead. Hakejo, or as some have been known to call it, Hakijo, are essential in the creation of prismatic glyphs, a staple for PvE tanks and for many PvP builds. Like the apothecary satchels, purchasing Hakejo to sell is another solid means to reliably turn small sums of Telvar into gold. You can even use that Hakejo to craft a prismatic glyph and get more bang for your buck. If you have a considerable amount of Telvar that you're looking to convert into gold, gambling on powerful assault gear is the way to go. This set is useful in both PvE and PvP, so there's a lot of demand for certain pieces of this set, namely the Ice Staves. Alright, I want to tell you all a story real quick. Once upon a time, a long, long time ago, before all my PvP homies quit the game and I was still a Cyril regular, more of a BG Andy these days, a shitter Nightblade ran into Drakkar and I at a resource in Cyrodiil, deep into Aldmeri Dominion territory, I might add and we killed them immediately. <laughs> As the two of us pulled out our maps and discussed where we should go next, the Nightblade returned. Mans probably had a camp down and we promptly killed them again. The Nightblade then did what Nightblades do best and sent a slew of angry messages to me telling me to f off. <laughs> I had no idea why this Nightblade was so insistent on taking this resource that was so far away from home until it dawned on me. Oh, maybe he has a capture quest? Or a capture 9 resources quest? Either way, I respect the hustle, so I wrote to them to ask them if they needed the resource for a quest and that Drakkar and I would gladly leave the resource so they could take it. No problem. They then had an aneurysm in my whispers and claimed that they didn't need to do Cyrodiil quests, but that players like me probably do. Huh? To this day, I still think about this sentiment because not only was the whole encounter pretty bizarre, but I didn't think that there were PvPers out there that viewed Cyrodiil mission board quests or any kind of PvP quests this way. Joke's on them, they're missing out, man. Guess that's why they're so poor. So let me explain why. 
there are a plethora of different quests that you can pick up in Cyrodiil and the Imperial City. A majority of these quests reward you with a small sum of AP upon completing the objective at hand, whether that objective is to kill 20 Dragon Knights, or scout a resource, or win 3 battlegrounds. You may as well pick up these quests to earn that extra little bit of AP while you play. But there are two noteworthy quests that I want to draw your attention to. The Cyrodiil Daily Conquest is a shareable daily repeatable quest that asks you to complete one of the following objectives. Upon completing this objective and turning in your quest, you receive a gladiator's rec sack that contains an arena gladiator proof. You can only receive these proofs once per day. Once you stock up on enough of these merits, you can use them to purchase some very exclusive and very expensive items. If you're looking to earn some gold from this endeavor, using these merits to purchase Knight of the Circle style pages is the way to go, as this is one of the nicest looking styles in the game. And again, it's very difficult to earn. Body pieces will set you back 20 proofs, while weapons will cost you 40. The Arena Gladiator rune box is not a bad investment either if you're not a fan of RNG. The Imperial City equivalent is the Siege of Cyrodiil Merit, an item that can be earned once per day upon completing district quests. These district quests can be picked up at the spawns of each district and turned in at your Alliance sewer base. A great way to turn these into gold is to purchase the Timber Crow Wanderer rune box. Speaking of, if there are any Zoss employees watching, yeah, could we have more ways to spend these IC merits? That would be very PogChamp of you guys, and it could bring more people into IC maybe. If you're gonna be out and about in Cyrodiil and the Imperial City, you may as well pick up these quests and earn a little something extra on the side. And hey, who knows what other kinds of really neat items the devs might add in the future that require these daily merits. For every 20k AP that you earn, you receive a Rewards for the Worthy coffer. This coffer can drop a variety of exclusive sets, and a few of those sets are pretty spicy. If your team places first or second in a battleground, you can also receive Battlemaster Riven's reward box. A couple of these sets have been known to be valuable from time to time. At the moment, these are the following valuable PvP reward coffer sets that you should consider selling instead of deconstructing. But of course, be sure to price check your items using your preferred way to do so, just in case. I'm also certain that there will be even more sought after sets added to these coffers in the future, much like the set Nocturnal's Ploy, which is set to release in update 35. I'll do my best to keep you all updated on these new tradable sets in my quarterly gold guides. And last but not least, we can't forget about the War Torts. I have a more comprehensive written guide on my website that has all the details about how to get these pies, but real quick. The Colovian War Tort recipe can spawn at any resource node in Cyrodiil, where it takes on the form of a glowing green book called Lost Imperial Notes. You can learn this recipe for yourself to sell some pies for gold or sell the recipe straight up. This recipe does call for Cyrodiil citruses, which can be acquired by completing quests in Cyrodiil. Speaking of Cyrodiil resource nodes, they have a chance to drop a giga rare material called Morning Dew, which is required to craft a subsequent war tort. So hey, it pays off to pay attention to those nodes the next time you're getting zerged down by the entire EP faction stack in the wilds of Cyrodiil. The Molten War Tort recipe requires a Colovian War Tort recipe and a Chef Arquidius' Tort dissertation in order to be created. That recipe fragment will cost you 500,000 Telvar, by the way. But you bet your ass that the Molten War Torts, the Molten War Tort recipe, and the recipe fragment all sell for a shitload of gold, so I had to mention them. And in order to create the Giga War Tort recipe, you need the Molten War Tort recipe and Chef Arquidius's Lost Thesis. This latter item is an incredibly rare drop that can only come from the completion of Battlegrounds. How rare, you ask? Rare enough that I've seen one sell for 160 million gold on PCNA. I know, I cry. Selling these war torts is a solid means to make gold, or if you're not much of a chef, selling the recipes, fragments, and ingredients related to these torts can put a fair amount of gold in your pocket. I really like this neat little addition that Sauce implemented a while back. I think it's provided some more neat opportunities for PvPers to receive exclusive items while they play. And I hope that we can continue to see nifty items such as these added to the PvP side of things. There are plenty of ways to earn gold while you PvP, and I've tried my best to highlight some of the ones that have certainly served me well over the years. I hope that what I've mentioned today can be helpful for you as well. What's your preferred PvP gold-making method? I'd love to hear about it in the comments. Alright, that's all for now. 
Huge thanks to my YouTube members for sponsoring this content and allowing me to create better produced work for you all. And of course, thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day, a great time PvPing, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Thank you.